Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 24th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So again, today's diary is answering a question that uh, I have been often asked and uh, there really hasn't been sort of an easy answer necessarily for that question. And that's uh, which process on a Linux host did resolve a particular host name? You may have, for example, some DNS logs that indicate that a certain system in your network did resolve a suspicious host name, but now you try to figure out uh, which process it was on that system. For example, a mail server. A lot of mail servers, for example, as part of receiving email, will resolve uh, various uh, host names that uh, they receive email from just for spam lookup and such. Well, it uh, can be difficult to distinguish those lookups from maybe some kind of backdoor or so being installed on that same uh, mail server. Now, uh, Xavier here is using a little bit of a cheat kind of uh, in that he uses a Sysmon. Sysmon usually we use it uh, for Windows, but has also been available for Linux now for a while. And uh, Sysmon is able to not just log DNS queries on a host, but also which process actually triggered the DNS query. And then once you sort of have the process identified, you can also use S trace in order uh, to then dump more information about the particular uh, network activity. And uh, well, but in order to do that, you typically first uh, want to know what process ID to actually follow because S trace itself uh, can output uh, quite a ton of uh, data. As usual, you'll find more details in Xavier's diary. And then we got updates for everything from Apple. Apple updated uh, iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS, as well as Safari. Now, it didn't just update the latest versions of these respective operating systems, but uh, also older versions of the operating systems, fixing essentially the same bugs. One interesting inclusion here is iOS 12.5.7. That gets you back uh, to iPhone 5S and that generation of devices. The one vulnerability being addressed here is an actively exploited vulnerability that has already been patched for some of the newer operating systems. Other than that, uh, nothing uh, terribly exciting. I'll probably do a quick sort of summary of it uh, tomorrow. Actually, not a ton of different vulnerabilities uh, being uh, patched in this particular uh, lineup. A lot of uh, WebKit stuff again that, of course, uh, you have to pay attention to some interesting Wi-Fi issues, for example, in Monterey. Apply the patch, but nothing really sort of out of the ordinary here necessarily. A new security related feature that has gotten quite a bit of press is the use of hardware security keys. Now, macOS has always supported hardware security keys, or at least for quite a while, either to log in or also to log into uh, websites via FIDO2 in more recent editions. But what this particular update adds is the ability to use hardware security keys uh, to protect your Apple ID. So an interesting addition here uh, to the security of uh, your Apple accounts. And the NSA published a very brief a guideline for IPv6 security. If you are considering deploying IPv6 or if you have already done so, you definitely should look this document over. Not everything is really that terribly applicable to modern operating systems and such, but it's a good start. And what I would actually recommend is take a look at the references at the end of the document. You'll find some nice pointers here so to some pretty good guidance. Just be careful with some of the older documents there. 
In the category of old tricks that will never really get old, uh, Kaspersky has an interesting uh, mobile malware that actually changes uh, DNS settings. Changing DNS settings has been done, well, uh, sort of forever, often done sort of in routers and the like, but also in operating system settings itself. This latest uh, iteration of this trick is called Roaming Mantis by Kaspersky, and essentially a malicious mobile app that will change your DNS settings with the goal of having you resolve a host names using that malicious DNS server and being able to further redirect you to malicious sites or to be able to intercept, for example, ads and to replace them with their own ads. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.